Ever since we made a couple of videos on vaccines, we have been asked by many as to which vaccine was better. One of my work colleagues who took COVID shield the other day said that she would have preferred Covaxin, but it was not available. The same day, another friend messaged me and said that they had taken Covaxin and asked me to get COVID shield if possible. So why do people have such contradictory views when it comes to vaccines? Although we had briefly touched this topic in one of our earlier videos, we thought we would make a separate video considering that many people have these seeds of doubt in their minds. Efficacy numbers are often touted as the deciding factor between vaccines. So what does efficacy numbers actually mean and how do we interpret it to determine which vaccine is better? Here we will look at two numbers efficacy numbers and effectiveness as they are both different. We will try and explain the difference in simple terms. We looked around for videos which explain how to calculate these numbers which would help you understand it much better on YouTube but we didn't find many and hence we decided to make this one. People who are watching this video outside India don't close the video as we would be talking about vaccines in general. So let's finally put to rest the most important question on everybody's minds. Which vaccine is better? We have all been hearing about the vaccine's efficacy rates for the last few months. The vaccines from Pfizer, BioNTech and Moderna are said to have super high efficiency values of 95% and 94%. But Johnson & Johnson was just 66%. Covishield from AstraZeneca has 72% while Covaxin has 81%. And if you only look at these numbers, it is natural to think that some vaccines are better than the others. But that assumption is wrong. These numbers are not even the most important measure of how effective these vaccines are. To understand this, what you need to understand is what vaccines are supposed to do. All current COVID vaccines are supposed to lessen the effects of COVID and are not designed to prevent an infection. So even if you have taken a COVID vaccine, you may still end up getting COVID. That does not mean that these vaccines are useless as we would see as we go along. A vaccine's efficacy rate is calculated in large clinical trials when the vaccine is tested on tens of thousands of people. These people are separated into two groups called the experimental group and the control group. Half of these, the experimental group, gets the real vaccine and half of them who belong to the control group gets a placebo. A placebo can be called as a fake vaccine or no vaccine. It looks just like a vaccine but would not contain any active ingredient to cure COVID. We have already done many videos on vaccines and you can check them out from the links in the description box below. Why do they do this kind of trial with two groups? That is the way science works. We need to eliminate all biases and it provides researchers with a comparison point for new therapies so they can prove they are safe and effective. Alternative medicines and pseudoscientific claims do not necessarily do this and hence their claims are also unscientific. As I said, we had watched a lot of videos on which vaccine is better and we didn't see this kind of analysis in any of them. Hence thought we should present it in our video. Anyways, the people who participated in the trial are sent out to continue with their normal lives while researchers monitor whether or not they get COVID-19 over the next few months post the trial. Let us take Covaxin as an example since the trials were conducted wholly in India. The phase 3 study had 25,800 participants between the ages of 18 to 98, including 2,433 over the age of 60 and 4,500 with comorbidities. Vaccine efficacy is measured by calculating the risk of disease among vaccinated and unvaccinated persons and determining the percentage reduction in risk of disease among vaccinated persons in relation to unvaccinated persons. The greater the percentage of reduction of illness in the vaccinated group, the greater will be the vaccine's efficacy. 
So the formula for calculating efficacy is risk among unvaccinated group minus risk among vaccinated group divided by risk among unvaccinated group. Simply put, it is the number of people in the placebo who got COVID minus the number of people in the vaccine group which got COVID divided by the number of people in placebo who got COVID. Sounds complicated? Don't worry, we will explain in simple terms. Isn't that what we do always? Now let us see how the efficacy rates were calculated for Covaxin. If the number of people who got COVID were all from the experimental group which were given the actual vaccine, then the efficacy rate is 0%. That means it is not effective as all the people who got COVID were from the group which got the vaccine. That means the vaccine is a failure. On the other hand, if all the people who got COVID were in the placebo group and no one from the experimental group got COVID, then the efficacy is 100%. No one who received the vaccine were infected. So to calculate the efficacy values, we need to see how many people who got COVID were in the placebo group and subtract the people who got COVID in the vaccine group and then find the percentage by dividing it with the total number from placebo group. Now in the case of Covaxin, of the 25,800 people who were tested, 43 people got COVID later. Now out of this total number, 36 cases were from the placebo or control group and 7 were from the group which actually got the vaccine. This number is always available with the vaccine manufacturers and these were released as part of the interim trial results. Now let us put this in the formula. 36 from placebo group minus 7 from experimental group divided by 36. This gives us a figure of 80.56% or rounded off to 81%. The efficacy rate of Covaxin. Simple enough? Now this doesn't mean if 100 people were vaccinated, 19 of them will get sick. It means that each vaccinated person is 81 person less likely to be infected than a person who has not taken the vaccine when they are exposed to COVID-19. Now what does efficacy values calculate? The percentage of people who get COVID-19 at a certain time at a certain location. Now we all know that the situations in each country differs from time to time. If you did the trial when COVID numbers are low in a place, then the chances of people getting infected would also be less. The greater the number of cases, the larger would be the chances. For example, if the trials were conducted in India during Jan and Feb of 2021, the numbers would show less as India was experiencing a dip in cases during those months. Instead, if you had conducted it in the middle of April and early May, the chances would have been high as there were a huge number of cases at that time. If you had taken a sample group that went to Kumbh Mela or an election rally, the chances would have been even higher as no one was wearing a mask or following social distancing. But if you do the trial at a place where people follow social distancing and wear masks, the efficacy values would be high as the risk is lesser. So efficacy values keep changing depending upon the circumstances for the same vaccine. Hence, it is not a very good measure to determine if it is a good vaccine or not. All the vaccine's efficacy rates are calculated in the same way, but each vaccine trial might be done in very different circumstances. The table is here for you to calculate. If you are trying to make an apple to apple comparison between vaccines, then they should have been done at the same trial with the same inclusion criteria in the same part of the world at the same time. Now if a vaccine manufacturer conducts a repeat of their clinical trial today, we might see quite different efficacy numbers. It can go up or down. These efficacy numbers really just tells you what happened during the vaccine trial and it does not tell what will happen in the real world. Moreover, judging a vaccine based on its efficacy numbers is not ideal because preventing an infection at all is not always the point of a vaccine. The goal of a vaccine program for COVID-19 is not necessarily to get to zero cases of COVID, but to remove 
its ability to cause serious disease or hospitalization and death. It is sort of like removing the poison sack of a snake. It can still bite you, but it won't kill you. Now let us look at another number, effectiveness of vaccines. For this, we need to look at a scale. On one side of the scale is where you don't get sick at all due to COVID. That is, you are asymptomatic. You don't even realize you have COVID and you recover without realizing that you are infected. On the tipping end of the scale is when you die due to an infection. In between these two extreme points lies a scenario where you have to be hospitalized due to moderate or heavy symptoms and your oxygen levels drop. You have serious pneumonia and you need a ventilator but at the end of the day you escape death. Towards the other end is a case where you recover from the symptoms at home by taking medicines while having mild to moderate symptoms. The main intention of all COVID-19 vaccines is to prevent you from getting to the right end of the scale. That is, even if you catch an infection, you would feel more like you have a common cold than get into serious complications like pneumonia or hypoxia. And here is where every one of these COVID-19 vaccines did well in all the clinical trials. Not one fully vaccinated person in any of these trials were hospitalized or died from COVID-19. This means that if you consider what these vaccines were made for, it had 100% effectiveness. Even if you had looked at the numbers where people get COVID after vaccination, the numbers released by ICMR should boost your confidence in them. As you saw, the numbers are really encouraging as only around 0.04% of the people who took the vaccine got COVID. That is 1 in every 25,000. Now what you need to consider is that even if there has been any deaths due to COVID and I'm just speculating it here as there has been no deaths reported due to COVID after taking the vaccination. Even if there are deaths, it would be much lesser than the 0.04% as only that many got infected. This is much much lesser than the 1.1% official deaths due to COVID that we are witnessing in the country right now. If that doesn't encourage you to take the shot, what would? So it doesn't matter which vaccine had higher efficacy values or which vaccine will prevent you from getting COVID. What matters is which one will keep you alive or out of the hospital. Which one will help end the pandemic and the answer is any of them. The best vaccine right now for you is the one that you are offered with each shot that goes on someone's arm, we will get closer to the end of this pandemic, which is what matters. So go ahead, take your best shot. By the way, there is a tail end to this story. I have just taken my first shot of the vaccine a couple of hours ago and it was Covaxin. As if I cared which one it was. What mattered to me was that the vaccine gets into me before the virus does. So in my race to beat the virus, so far, the vaccine is winning. As we mentioned, almost every vaccine video out there mentions the conclusion that you should take any vaccine available, just like we did. They all say not to go by the efficacy numbers. However, very few, indeed very little of them go to the extent of making you understand how efficacy numbers are calculated and why you need not pay attention to them. So that is what we try to do here. Try to make you understand the why behind the reason for overlooking efficacy numbers and instead to concentrate on the effectiveness numbers. We hope you liked this video. If you did, please share to spread the message and to encourage the rest of the public to take the vaccination. Until everyone takes it, the virus would be here to stay. And unless you press the subscribe and press the bell icon and select all, you would not get to know about the interesting videos that we make for you. Until next time, it's bye bye from Pale Blue Thoughts.